You're probably here because you want to apply to University of Cambridge for a master's program in architecture and urban design. You saw that you need to submit something called a research proposal, a writing sample and a portfolio. And you're probably wondering, hmm, what the fuck is a research proposal and how do I write one? So in this video, I am going to read to you word for word what I wrote. Please don't copy it because they will know. Just use as a reference what type of stuff gets accepted apparently. So the title of my research proposal is called The Urban Slum as a Model for a New Paradigm in Housing Development. I actually split it up into four different sections. Section one is called Topic. Section two is called Hypothesis. Section three is called Literature Review. And section four is Methodology. For the first time in history, the majority of the world's population lives in cities. It's predicted that by 2030, 60% of the world population will be urban dwellers, with the proportion increasing to 70% by 2050. There is intense pressure on governments to plan for this influx of people, but very few are prepared for this challenge. The urbanization process is outgrowing city supporting capacity, and there's an inadequate number of affordable housing available to the migrants, instigating the burgeoning of slums, squatter, and informal settlements around the rapidly expanding cities of the developing world. Informal settlements have many positive attributes that planned housing schemes lack. To the eyes of many, the slums look chaotic and unsanitary, but they display social cohesion and vibrant economic activity. The poor have had to contrive a living for themselves, so they are rich in ideas and entrepreneurial ingenuity and are a hub for self-organised communal activities. <clears throat> a stark contrast to the many monotonous blocks of purpose-built housing. The key to these flourishing settlements is its organic incremental growth developed out of response to the ever-changing needs of its users and the community. Thus, the architecture of urban communities should be encouraged to grow in a dynamic and innovative fashion that is responsive to the changing parameters of a society. Only then can they thrive as a sustainable, socially and economically, and resilient community. There is, however, no existing model for creating an open-ended piece of architecture which allows incremental organic growth to happen whilst providing the necessities of infrastructure for the users such as water and sanitation. Can we create a new urban model for communities which encourage open development, allow the inherently humane qualities of informal settlements to exist, whilst providing modern amenities to a standard found in modern planned housing? Question mark. Section 2. Hypothesis. It's predicted that the urban population will almost double from approximately 3.4 billion in 2009 to 6.4 billion in 2050, with the majority of growth occurring in developing countries. However, few countries, cities or agencies have acknowledged this critical situation, and outside of a few rapidly advancing countries, little development effort is going into providing jobs for these people, or planning for land, housing and services these billions of people will need. One extreme example is to plan megacities with dedicated zones for housing, commerce, etc. However, this top-down system of planning and treating the city as a machine tends to produce aseptic cities that are aesthetically orderly but lifeless and sterile. Cities are dynamic, complex, organic systems constantly evolving. They cannot be originally designed for like an engineering problem. A designed model does not have the capacity to consider all the possibilities and eventualities that can happen in the city. It cannot be built to assume that it can fulfil all existing and future demands. Cities are complex, dynamic and adaptable systems composed of millions of individuals who each make hundreds of individual decisions that set in motion consequences leading to a million other decisions. This stochastic chain of choices add up to an emergent whole. In contrast, settlements that grow up without central planning and control tends to be more successful. In appearance, they are more chaotic, labyrinthian <laughs> and fractal, but thick with social and business networks. These informal settlements are clever. They are continually responsive to the changing requirements of its users. Urban centres developed under central planning and control work less well than autocatalytic cities which are produced through bottom-up growth. Successful urban centres are self-sustaining and have the capability of providing something for everyone only because and only when they are created by everyone. 
dense areas of urban housing can be argued to be a micro version of the city. So the same principles apply. Rather than create rigid smart homes for people, it would be far more sensible to create a new model with smart infrastructures that allows organic growth to happen and spaces which can develop out of response of the changing needs and values of its urban residents. The key is to develop a new urban settlement model that gives the freedom for incremental growth and natural development to happen. Only when enough freedom is given to its user to adapt the spaces for themselves, then can we produce a place that is walkable, mixed use, adapted to local environment, culture and materials that is the antithesis of the faceless slab blocks that are still being built around the world to warehouse the poor. Literature review. A recent piece of research by Alfredo Brillin Morg and Hubert Klumpfner studies the success that Tor David, a vertical slum adapted from the empty shell of a derelict commercial building in Venezuela. Formerly known as the Central Financiero Confinances. Oh, sorry, I don't. Yeah. Sometimes I really can't pronounce words. It's the third tallest building in the heart of Caracas' past central business district. Since its 1994 banking crisis, the building remained incomplete and was gradually taken over by self-organized communities of squatters made up of more than 750 families. In the absence of formal infrastructure and government intervention, the residents dictated new uses for the empty spaces and are using it to fulfill their housing needs gradually adapting and improving it to meet a certain standard of habitation. Over time, this community has stabilized, creating autonomous organizational forms that reinforce their sense of identity and solidarity. Tour David could rightly be called a mixed-use building, more truthfully so than other developments planned and programmed for that purpose. The latter strictly quarantine one use from another, usually in horizontal blocks, whereas Tour David's residents have blended uses in an ad hoc fashion. It's highly interesting to see the development which comes out of human entrepreneurial ingenuity. Tour David represents the potential and possibilities of the unfinished and challenges us to create open, flexible structures. Kowloon Walled City in Hong Kong is another example of dense, urban, informal settlement. The Walled City was a working model of the anarchist society. Inevitably, crimes flourished and the environment was dirty. But the walled city also had many positive achievements. For all its shortcomings, its builders and residents succeeded in creating the city as an organic megastructure. Not set rigidly for a lifetime, but evolving, fulfilling every need of the residents from water supply to religion, yet providing also the warmth and intimacy of a single huge household. These examples show that a lively, well-integrated and self-sustainable community can be generated when its architecture allows for flexibility and adaptation. On the negative side, these studies do not inform us of a model which can be applied in other geographic locations. So I propose further research into other informal settlements to so to deduce a strategy. The last section. My research method will consist of analyzing case studies of existing successful urban and informal settlements around the world. I propose to do this by analyzing their current configuration, studying their evolution over a predetermined time frame in terms of area, population, and diversity of functions, categorize the social groups within the settlement, find a correlation between its scale and organization of spaces. With the results of my investigation, I hope to deduce a pattern of organic expansion, which can be used to generate an open-ended architectural model. This new system should be better able to withstand the, the volatility of the global economy. And then actually, I then have one last section where it's just called bibliography, and it lists like all of the um, texts I had read and reference within this research proposal. I hope this was helpful. So I'm gonna go now to make another video uh, where I read out loud the writing sample I submitted. So click here to watch the next video. Bye!